Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake and welcome to another part of my learning to make YouTube video series. Now in this video I'm actually going to talk a little bit about software for making YouTube videos. Now if you've been watching my videos you know that I edit the majority of my videos using Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Adobe Premiere Pro is professional video editing software but it doesn't take you having to have a professional background in video editing to be able to use it. It's actually very user friendly and with the new Adobe CC subscription model you can actually get this software for $20 a month or if you want to subscribe to the entire creative suite you can do that for about $50 a month with a one year commitment. Now this is not an Adobe product video and I'm not getting paid directly by Adobe for this. I really wish I was but that notwithstanding I feel obligated to recommend the software because it's what I've been using the longest it's what I'm most comfortable with and I can guarantee up to a point the quality of the results that it produces and its ease of use. I'll actually be doing some tutorial videos on this channel about using Adobe Premiere. So if you're interested in jumping into it or improving that workflow, stay tuned for those videos and um, we'll just move forward in talking about some of the other alternatives to that software. Now, those of you just starting into video editing, you're going to probably need to start with some of the free software. Depending on what platform you're using, you have some options. If you're on a Mac, you can start with iMovie. iMovie is okay. It actually has some really nice advanced features but it can be a little cumbersome to learn a little bit of the overall editing workflow because it's very different than any other non-linear editing system that I've ever used, to be honest. Cutting and trimming the videos is not very intuitive in iMovie, but it is something that you can learn and it actually has some other great features like allowing you to adjust the color fairly easily, do transitions, drag and drop, so it's actually not bad at all. And of course it is free. Another alternative is Windows Movie Maker for those of you on a Windows PC. Now Windows Movie Maker is free software, so like iMovie, it has some limitations and the ease of use might seem a little more intuitive, but overall just doing certain things is either impossible or very hard to do. Both these applications struggle from the fact that they don't allow for multi-track editing, they don't actually let you put things on a true timeline that you can really just sit there and cut up and chop up looking in professional applications. So again, I just don't feel that they're very user friendly even though they're the free model and they are usually most people's first experience of video editing. In some ways, the older versions of iMovie were actually a lot better as well as the older versions of Windows Movie Maker in terms of how intuitive they were. Now, if you want a nice compromise between affordable software and professional software, I'm going to recommend another Adobe product called Adobe Premiere Elements. Adobe Premiere Elements, for those of you not familiar with Photoshop Elements, is a scaled down version of Adobe's Premiere um, video editing platform. And what this means is that you don't get all the bells and whistles that you do with a Premiere Pro, but you have everything you need to edit professional video, and this software is actually only $70. With this software, you can produce amazing results. And I highly recommend it for anybody who's a beginner at video editing and wants to eventually transition into a much more professional level of software. This will actually help you out and get you used to a lot of things very quickly. Now, in terms of professional video editing software, if you don't want to go with a subscription model from Adobe, the most affordable professional video editing software that I can recommend is going to be Final Cut Pro X. Final Cut Pro X is about $5.99 right now, as opposed to buying Adobe um, Premiere Pro CS6 outrightly, which I believe right now is $6.99. So it's a $100 difference. What I will say is that Adobe Premiere is a lot more intuitive and user-friendly than Final Cut Pro. However, Final Cut Pro does have some very interesting features. And for those of you who are Mac users, your general workflow might actually be a little easier or more what you're used to in terms of the Apple ecosystem and working with this and you'll have access to Apple's ProRes format. So these are things to consider and if you're planning to work with other people who are Mac users within the video editing profession you may want to go the Final Cut Pro route but if you want to be more universal I would recommend either going Adobe Premiere Pro or using Avid which is the next type of software we're going to talk about. Avid Composer is part of what I refer to as the big three when it comes to video editing software. The big three are Avid Composer, sorry, Avid Media Composer, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Apple Final Cut Pro, currently Final Cut Pro version X. So 
with that being said, that's kind of your trendy in terms of professional video editing software. Some of these programs are a little complicated. The features can be difficult to use if you're not used to them. They take time. But if you make enough videos with them, you'll get used to it and you'll actually be able to do some pretty amazing things and you'll actually have a lot more polished video to present. There's also the fact that these video programs are actually compatible with some other features that allow you to use other applications and bring in things like motion graphics, animation, and 3D. In the Adobe family, you have Adobe After Effects, as well as the rest of the Adobe um, products that let you bring in um, logos that you can animate in vector format. You can actually bring in um, Photoshop artwork. And if you update it, it'll actually update in your project file if you're using Premiere. So this is just some things to consider. In terms of Apple's product, you can actually use Apple Motion, which is a motion graphics program, uh, duh. And you can actually import those into Final Cut Pro. So that might be the workflow that you want to use. Avid has a whole suite of applications that I'm not even going to get into. So, you know, you can definitely um, look at what you're going to expand to in terms of your software later down the road when making a decision. The easiest out of the big three to transition into is obviously Adobe Premiere Pro because of the Adobe subscription model. You can actually spend $20 for a month in addition to the free trial, and you can actually play around with this, and you can actually get some professional video. If you have a short-term project, that might actually be good because you can only pay the monthly fee instead of paying for all that software up front outright. You might find that video editing is not for you, so maybe you don't want to invest in it right away, and a monthly model makes sense. I don't know. But to each his own, and I'm just saying that that's an easy way to transition into this, without a huge spending commitment or being limited by the free software. You can actually introduce yourself to the pro software affordably if you go that route. Now, the most affordable option out of any of these is one that I haven't mentioned yet, which is Sony Vegas. Some of you actually may have heard of Sony Vegas before, and it's actually pretty amazing software. I haven't used it since version 7, but it was really intuitive. Um, it was cost effective, and it produced a lot of the same features and results that I was used to from Adobe Premiere Pro. So if I had to make another recommendation aside from Adobe Premiere Pro, I would go in this order. I would say Adobe Premiere Pro is my first pick for video editing software on a professional level, followed by Sony Vegas, then Avid Composer, and last, Final Cut Pro. And the only reason that Final Cut Pro is really last is because it's actually a very powerful program, but it is specific to the Mac platform, and that can cause you a few problems. Um, if you happen to not be working on your own computer or if you need to coordinate with people who aren't Mac users, etc. Whereas the other three programs that I mentioned are universal and work on both Mac and PC. So anyway, this was uh, my overview on video editing software that you can use for your YouTube videos or for video production in general. I uh, hope you guys like this video. Um, don't forget to subscribe, share it with friends, and stay tuned for more videos in my YouTube video production series. All right, thanks for watching.